Tom, Lisa and Rachel were buzzing with excitement. The Appalachian Trail stretched before them, a ribbon of green, promising adventure. They were prepared for anything, or so they thought. The morning air was crisp, filled with the scent of pine and damp earth. They set off, their backpacks heavy with supplies, their hearts light with anticipation. The trail was alive with the sounds of nature. Birds chirped, squirrels chattered, leaves crunched under their boots. Tom led the way, his compass in hand, his map tucked securely in his pocket. They chatted and laughed, enjoying the camaraderie and the beauty of their surroundings. For now, everything was perfect. Hours melted away. They stopped for a quick lunch by a gurgling stream. Tom consulted the map. There's a scenic detour marked a little further up, he said, pointing to a faint line. It adds a couple of miles, but it might be worth it. Lisa and Rachel agreed. The allure of the unknown was too strong to resist. They found the trailhead easily enough. However, there was something different about this path. It felt less traveled, less welcoming. The trees seemed to press in closer, their branches tangled and gnarled. The air, once fresh and vibrant, felt heavy, stagnant. A sense of unease crept over them, unspoken but shared. They walked in silence for what felt like hours. The sun began to dip lower in the sky, casting long, eerie shadows through the trees. Just as their unease peaked, they stumbled upon a clearing. In the center stood a dilapidated log cabin, its windows dark and lifeless. It seemed to materialize out of the shadows, unexpected and unsettling. Well, this is creepy, Lisa whispered, her voice barely audible. The cabin seemed to watch them with a silent, malevolent curiosity. Its rough-hewn logs were blackened with age, and its roof sagged precariously. A rusty axe lay half-buried in a rotting log near the porch, a testament to a forgotten time. Despite their growing unease, curiosity got the better of them. They cautiously approached the cabin. The door creaked open with a groan, revealing a dusty, cobweb-filled interior. The air inside was thick with the smell of decay and something faintly sweet and unsettling. It felt cold, unnaturally so. They exchanged nervous glances, their backpacks suddenly feeling heavy and cumbersome. Tom brushed away a layer of dust from a rickety table, revealing faded photographs scattered across its surface. The images were old, their edges browned and torn. They depicted people dressed in clothes from a bygone era, their faces frozen in time. One picture in particular sent a shiver down Lisa's spine. It showed a young woman standing in front of the cabin, her eyes wide and haunted, her smile strained. The unsettling photos were enough for Rachel. Let's get out of here, she urged, her voice tight with anxiety. The sun was setting rapidly, casting the forest in an eerie orange glow. They stepped outside, eager to put as much distance as possible between themselves and the unsettling cabin. But as they turned to leave, they realized with a jolt that the trail they had been following was gone. Panic welled up in their chests. They were lost, disoriented. The forest, once beautiful and inviting, now felt like a menacing labyrinth. Let's not panic, Tom said. His voice strained but calm. He tried to retrace their steps, but every direction looked the same. The trees seemed to mock them, their branches twisting and turning, offering no clear path. The cabin, Lisa exclaimed, a sudden flicker of hope in her voice. We can use it as a landmark. They turned back, their eyes scanning the now darkening woods. But the cabin was gone. Where it had stood moments ago, there was nothing but trees and undergrowth. It was as if the forest had swallowed it whole. Fear, raw and primal, gripped them. The woods were silent except for the frantic beating of their hearts. They were utterly alone, lost in a place where reality seemed to bend and twist. This can't be happening, Rachel muttered, her voice trembling. 
Night descended like a suffocating blanket, plunging the forest into an oppressive darkness. Every shadow seemed to writhe and take on a life of its own. The air grew colder, biting at their skin. Then they heard it, a low rustling sound, coming from the undergrowth just beyond the reach of their vision. Lisa gasped, her eyes wide with terror. What was that, she whispered, her voice barely a squeak. Tom strained his ears, trying to identify the source of the sound. It was close, too close. It was as if something was moving through the undergrowth, circling them, watching them. Then through the darkness they saw them. Figures tall and gaunt, their forms obscured by the shadows. They moved silently, their eyes glowing with an eerie, unnatural light. Lisa screamed a high-pitched sound that echoed through the trees. Terror lent them a burst of adrenaline. They didn't wait to see more. They ran blindly, crashing through the undergrowth, their backpacks bouncing painfully against their backs. Branches whipped at their faces, tearing at their clothes. They didn't care. All that mattered was escape. Fear propelled them forward. They ran until their lungs burned and their legs screamed for mercy. The sounds of pursuit seemed relentless, the rustling getting closer. Finally, through the trees, they saw it, the faint outline of the trail. With the last ounce of strength, they stumbled onto the familiar path. They didn't stop running, not until the sounds of the forest faded behind them and they collapsed on the trail. Gasping for breath, they were safe for now. They spent the rest of the night huddled together on the trail, too terrified to sleep, their eyes darting nervously at every shadow. As dawn broke, casting pale fingers of light through the trees, they continued their journey. They finally stumbled out of the woods, exhausted and shaken, their clothes torn, their faces etched with the horror of the night. They found a ranger station a few miles down the road and poured out their story. The ranger listened patiently, his expression unreadable. When they were finished, he sighed. There are stories, he said, his voice low, legends about these mountains. He spoke of strange disappearances, unexplained phenomena and eerie occurrences that had plagued the area for generations. He mentioned whispers of an old cabin, a place where time stood still, a place that was best avoided. They left the ranger station shaken and bewildered. Their adventure had turned into a nightmare. They had faced the darkness that lurked beneath the serene beauty of the mountains, a darkness they would never forget. The mountains held their secrets close, whispering tales of terror on the wind. Tom, Lisa and Rachel knew they would never be the